I am Babli Jonathan and this is the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital dwelling our top stories in this edition of the news. Tension in the midst of tensions, internal squabbles hinder the smooth functioning of the Limbe City Council in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. The doors of the City Council at Down Beach remained closed today and so uh, thus the public deliberation session intended to take into consideration the opinions of the people in the 2022 budget of the Limbe City Council couldn't take place. Any news out of Cameroon condemnation raining down on the United Kingdom and European countries that have imposed travel bans on Southern African countries and Nigeria over the emergence of the Omicron new COVID-19 variant. And in sports, the trophy of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations is already in Cameroon. It was received earlier today by the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Professor Narcisse Mwele Kambi. We begin this newscast with updates on the coronavirus pandemic with the new variant, the Omicron variant detected in Africa and several European countries and the United Kingdom have imposed travel bans on Southern African countries and Nigeria over the emergence of this new COVID-19 variant and condemnation are reigning from across the globe on the United Kingdom and the European countries that have imposed travel bans on these African countries. This decision taken by those countries is considered as unfair by the African nations and other persons across the globe. And we have details with Immaculate Fogui. Health organization says blanket travel bans will not stop the spread of variants and can potentially discourage countries from reporting and sharing important data. This reaction comes following travel bans imposed on southern African countries, with Nigeria recently added to the red list by the UK government. An act described by many as wicked and unfair. Ghanaian President Nana Kufo Ado on his part describes the decision as instrument of immigration control. Dr. Kingwun Adesina, President of the African Development Bank on his Twitter handle, describes the travel ban as unfair, non-scientific and discriminatory. He queried why the travel ban has not been placed on non-African countries where Omicron has been found. The new COVID-19 variant Omicron was first detected in South Africa in the month of November. Top scientists of the World Health Organization raised concerns that Omicron could be more transmissible and also become the dominant strain worldwide. Health ministers of the European Union will be meeting on Tuesday 7th of December to determine whether travel restrictions in response to the spread of Omicron can be changed. In France, French Prime Minister Jean Castex has ordered that nightclubs shut their doors for four weeks to counter a COVID surge that has put hospitals on the stream. The country plans implementing stricter sanitary measures in primary schools. France has confirmed 25 cases of the new Omicron variant, but officials say the number could rise significantly. And in Cameroon, several companies, especially small and medium-sized enterprises, have been crumbled. Many are functioning below capacity or simply struggling to survive because of the consequences of the coronavirus pandemic. And the United Nations Development Program is now striving to revive, or better still, to revamp some of the companies, especially companies owned by female entrepreneurs. This is the purpose of a workshop that is taking place here in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. Details in this report compiled by Charles Sekome. Impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is far-reaching on local companies in Cameroon. Je de la COVID These entrepreneurs say la hausse des prix du because of COVID-19 restrictions, cost uh, of raw materials, transport, transport and uh, production in general um, have risen significantly. The COVID-19 challenges have added to other existing issues 
adversely affected especially small and medium-sized enterprises. We lack competencies on managing human resources in small and medium-sized enterprises. And the second aspect is about certification. To turn the tides, the United Nations Development Program is stepping up financial capacity and know-how of female entrepreneurs for economic resilience. It is the purpose of this meeting at the head office of the Cameroon Employers Organization in Douala. We train them on different uh, module, on different, uh, let's say, thematic for them to be more resilient to the impact of the COVID-19. We also support the women entrepreneurs by improving their access to finance through banking, through uh, uh, microfinance institutions for them to, to have the necessary, uh, let's say, funds say, to implement their activities. The United Nations Development Program is also building and strengthening their market capacity to enhance access to local and international markets. If we want to improve their access to market, focus on digital marketing, communication, improving the quality of their products to improve their competitiveness. With this training, they are expecting to be more resilient and to recover better. And we ask Ufrazi Kwame, who is the Financial Inclusion Policy and Strategy Advisor at the United Nations Development Program in Cameroon, why the focus on women? And this is what she had to say. For African society, women are the one who take care of the family. Women are the one who take care of the children. So when the crisis came, these women have to leave their activities to take care of the kids, who have been, who, are, who, who cannot go to school anymore. So most of them could not continue their activity. This is one of the, the cases. Second case, when there is somebody who is sick in the family, the woman is the one who will take care of this person. So at the end of the day, it is difficult for her to focus on her activity and also to focus on the illness of the person who is sick in the family. And third, women most of the time work in value chain who have been more affected by the crisis. So because the, the, the borders have been closed, most of these women were not, were not able to sell their products. And they, they, were, they got a lot of losses of product. Like, as I say, like the tomato production, most of the women who are in this value chain just love their products because they cannot, tomato is a product that we cannot like, uh, keep for long. And so there are a lot of value chain like this where women are and where the, the, the impact of the COVID-19 was more, let's say, high. To Limbe in the crisis-stricken southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon where uh, internal squabbles have been uh, threatening and hindering the smooth functioning of the Limbe City uh, Council. The doors of the City Council remained closed today, uh, this uh, because of some issues happening there. And the public deliberation session that was intended to take into consideration the opinions of the people in the elaboration and adoption of the budget of the City Council for 2022 couldn't take place. Davis in my more reports. Is this Cameroon or this is a personal matter? He comes and block it. As who? Who is he? Let him remain with his administration and leave the politics for the politicians. Frustration as some city dwellers, city councillors, chiefs, and quarter head met the door of the Limbe City Hall at Down Beach Locked. They are really embarrassed and this is a great waste and they say the age is the Secretary General that has done the job. He shouldn't mix up things. Those are two different things. Taking powers in his hand as who? A public deliberation to ascertain how the 2022 budget of the Limbe City Council as enshrined by the new digitalization text was supposed to take place. The disturbing factor because I don't know if they will have this kind of opportunity again for the population to express themselves before their budgetary session. Because we others, we are going to write very heavily against it. According to the first deputy city mayor, Karen Tanga, who was to coordinate the deliberations in the absence of the city mayor, the concerned authorities were duly notified. They were informed that this is happening because they are the hierarchy here. Strangely, the gate at the city council was equally locked during working hours on a working day. Also confused here. I've just been informed by the security that 
her boss says that she should close the gate by name Paul Yunga. So I'm waiting for him to come and tell me why the city council gate is closed on a working day. Lately, there has been tension within the Limbe City Council with allegations of sexual harassment and power tussling that has seen both divisional and regional authorities stepping in to redress the situation. I'm not fighting powers with anybody. There is a vote holder. There's no vacant position. If people have skeletons in their cupboards, it should be their personal problems. They should not involve the entire Limbe because Limbe does not belong to one person. Limbe is not a uh, personal property and these uh, positions are not ancestral schools. It should be noted, the senior divisional officer for FACO, Supervisory Authority of Councils in Gamba Emmanuel Edu, has issued a communique with deadline being the 15th of this month for all councils to have their sessions. Inhabitants of Logbesu in the Dweller 5 subdivision are begging for good roads. One of the major roads running across that part of the country's economic capital is in, a, in an advanced state of dilapidation and the people are suffering because of uh, that. And the construction of that road has been suspended by the city council over budgetary issues. Details in this report compiled by Inosinaze. This is Sozi Kumbu, a quarter in Logbesu in the Dweller 5 subdivision, deprived of possible roads. It's very difficult to us. When we have rain here, it's a big problem to us to go to the market, to the work, and the children to go to school. So our family are suffering. Locals say assessing the roads alone is exhausting. C'est là nous cause beaucoup de dommages. Tu prends une moto de Carrefour Logbesu. Après 4 13 en passant par Sotu Kumbu, tu payes 400 francs. Là où tu pouvais même payer 50 francs. Another inhabitant says during campaign period for the 2018 presidential election, bulldozers were parked at the field over there as if construction of the Logbesu roads was to begin. But after the presidential election, the bulldozers disappeared and resurfaced during legislative and municipal elections campaigns. According to the population, they were baffled to hear after the elections in Cameroon that a two-kilometer stretch of roads in Logbeso will no longer be constructed. Uh, we don't know why the mayor decided, the big mayor of the town, decided to remove the project of this road to us. Approaching the Dweller City Council, we were told off camera that normally the two kilometer stretch of roads were supposed to be constructed, but unfortunately, the deduction of 5 billion francs CFA from the 18 billion francs CFA budgeted for projects in Douala leaves the council with no other choice than suspension of the two kilometer stretch of roads linking Karifu Besu and Pekka Trace. Still on the roads, we now take you to Nkonsamba in the Mongo Division, littoral region of the Republic of Cameroon, where the people are complaining over the quality of roads being constructed across the municipality. And they are also worried about the consequences of the fact that several roads have been blocked as a result of rehabilitation works. Details in this report. Several roads in the town of Kongsamba, in the Mungu Division of the littoral region, have been blocked due to ongoing construction works from Balade to Dispensé Urbain as well as Petit Marché Cartesis to Karefu Masanga. Cars cannot circulate freely in these areas. But most astonishing, bike riders plying this stretch of road decry the poor materials used for the construction of the roads. Since the road start the road for you, I know you see better work if you were for you. Ever since construction works began on this stretch of road, I knew it would be a failure because the engineers never created another pathway during the construction process. So vehicles were still circulating on the very stretch of road while it was being repaired. If they leave them, they don't do nothing. Other locals say the roads will not be durable and question why start a project without proper execution. This is not a durable road. We were hoping the road would be tarred, but it's just been graded.
C'est très très mal même. This is absurd. It makes no sense to repair a road which after two days will be destroyed. According to locals, the construction company in charge of executing this project has been on the ground for close to two years without proper working materials. Moreover, they say this project was initially supposed to be completed within the time frame of six months, but has taken more time with the end result least appreciated. And Cameroonians are suffering from this problem of bad roads almost everywhere across the country, from the big cities to the hinterlands. Many uh, sections of the road network are in a bad state. And of course, this is also the problem in the northwest region of the country with the Bamenda Babaji Road that is still in a very deplorable state till today, even after the Prime Minister and Head of Government, Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute, announced during his last visit in Bamenda that work was going to start on that road, what was going to resume on that section of the road entering the northwest regional chief town uh, Bamenda that was uh, about two months ago and till today nothing has started there in, this, in the meantime the ring road is also uh, not being constructed as was promised by the head of state several years down in memory lane and the people are calling on government to match what with actions Bustela reports We will not have this report in this edition of the news time for us to talk about the trophy of the 2021 africa cup of nations it is already in cameroon it was received by the minister of sports and physical education professor nasis moele kambi earlier today smanjikan gabriel has more the gold plated african nations cup trophy that was made in italy is in Cameroon some days before the kickoff of the 33rd edition of the African Nations Cup to be hosted by Cameroon. It is a precious and prestigious trophy which is closer to the heart of the Confederation of African Football. The trophy that has taught all 23 countries that will be present for the Nations Cup arrived in Yaoundé on Monday night and this Tuesday, Sports Minister was host to the trophy. It was an occasion for the sports boss to reiterate the importance of this Nations Cup to Cameroon. It is a nation's cup that will portray the sociocultural aspects of the country. It is a historic event because it is coming to Cameroon after 50 years that we last hosted this competition. Apart from the cup that was at the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education, the mascot for the tournament, Mola, was also present. Mola Mola will be putting on a dress inspired by the outfit put on by the people of the grass fields, precisely those from the northwest region known as Togo. After the presentation of the trophy at the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education, the trophy was later taken to the Prime Minister's office. It was an occasion for Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute to fill the gold-plated trophy. The trophy and the mascot Mola are expected to tour the 10 regions of Cameroon from the 9th to the 22nd of December 2021. And that is it for the first part of this newscast coming up next, Talking Point. Another day, another miss, another health problem in the Republic of Cameroon. Tim Nuela, Miss Southwest Cameroon, welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Babila. Mm, you are on a crusade against sickle cell anemia. Yes, I am. Mm. And uh, it's actually a beautiful project um, that motivated me to actually take part in Miss Cameroon this year, which um, the team is um, Beauty at the Service of Health. So I'm promoting the awareness, more awareness on the disease. Right. Why did you choose sickle cell anemia? I choose um, sickle cell anemia because um, I've lived with persons who have the sickle cell disease. 
I know um, um, details about the disease. I know how much pain people actually go through living with the disease. And I, uh, mo most, people don't, uh, most people don't really um, take it very serious to know their genotype or actually considering taking the genotype test before getting married or thinking of having children. Um, that is why I want to add my voice to let the people know how serious this is and how serious they should take it. Mm, how serious they should take it and it yeah. begins with uh, the electrophoresis test is that yes correct before uh, a marriage uh, can actually uh, take place yeah before marriage you're actually thinking of conceiving a child there are people we have who have children without getting married um yeah the six electrophoresis test will help you to know your genotype and there you can actually know who is compatible with you with your genotype so that you don't bring children who have the SS and the suffer a lot. Mm. And, and this is sometimes uh, difficult to uh, push through the brains of many uh, who are taking into consideration the aspect of love more than any other thing. They just think that we are in love with each other, we should get married, uh, going for whatever test is not necessary. How are you doing to be able to convince people to send across this message to people that they need to go for this test before getting married? Um, to me, I think love is more than just um, um, the feelings or what we feel attract us to people. If we should consider spending our lifetime with someone or um, having children with that person, we should also consider the lives of the innocent children that we are going to bring into the world. We should consider, put so many things into consideration. And actually, some people are reluctant to take the sickle cell electrophoresis test because most people complain of the price. Um, that is why my team and I are actually working towards um, creating an avenue where we can act actually offer the sickle cell electrophoresis <coughs> test for free to an afri average Cameroonian so that uh, people would, would, most people will no longer have the reason to complain like, ah, oh, I'm not taking that test or the test is very expensive or, yeah. And some people are simply ignorant, and I guess that's why you're going um, across your area trying to get people to know about this. Now, another issue with this health problem is that it is often attributed to some kind of supernatural happenings, witchcraft and things like that. Uh, what are you doing in that area to be able to change mindsets there? Um, as a counselor, I, I, am well, I, I am very aware that people have um, different ways of thinking and perceiving things in the society. Um, but these are things that are biological that we need to explain more to people. Um, that is why uh, my campaign is not only creating awareness, but also teaching people more about the disease and how they could treat people living with it. Because um, people living with it actually go through a lot of stigma. Um, they often are attributed to the fact that they cannot live um, above a certain age, um, let's say 21 years, um, that they, can, they cannot bear healthy children, or they cannot have maybe a job or something doing in life. And we are actually working and sensitizing people to break all those myths and odds because if, 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 you, if you are living with the disease, all hopes are not lost because if you take good care of yourself and study more about the disease and listen to what your doctor is telling you, um, you have the chances of living uh, um, longer and actually having healthy children who are not going to be sickle cell persons. So yeah, so, uh, people need to know more about um, the whole uh, idea of the disease and more details because, um, yeah, lack of information. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, how, how has it been going, um, you know, when you're trying to break this kind of um, thoughts, this kind of ideas, this kind of ways of seeing things which are not necessarily correct, um, there are often barriers and it's not always easy to change mindsets, to change and take away some of these uh, things that have been in the brains of people from the time they were born. Actually, that is very correct. That is why we are not just um, um, people talking about the disease. We actually have medical practitioners in the team who are able to explain all the physics and the, bio the, 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 the chemistry and the biology in how this disease comes about, how it can be prevented, and how 
how uh, uh, um, the disease can actually affect other parts of the organ so that people know more about the disease. I, I believe that if people get the right inf information about the disease, um, it goes a long way to um, try and adjust the mentality of how people perceive the disease or people living with the disease. Mm. Uh, I believe you are looking forward to broaden the scope of your campaign when you become Miss Cameroon. Yes, actually, um, looking at the, the, the platform of Miss Cameroon, I believe it's going to be a great platform for me to expand the project to um, reaching uh, um, all the regions of Cameroon and why not um, touch other in international platforms too, um, because uh, this project I believe when it gets to giving the Miss Cameroon platform, it's going to get more um, people interested about it and more people um, go are going to know more about the disease. All right. Thanks so much, Tem Nuela, Miss Southwest Cameroon. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Babila. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Ekinox Television. Coming up next, live from Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundé, La Presse Dispute. And after that, Ekinox Stay with us.